When I was 20 years old, I was eating a sad diet, a standard American diet, and after I developed my ulcerative colitis and I questioned the role of food and learned that as I was becoming a vegan, my colitis was getting uh, better. It was affecting me less. So I started eating uh, less animal products and I completely cut out all animal products and became a vegan. And I wasn't completely cured, but I was a lot better. I ended up moving to West Palm Beach, Florida and I ended up moving next to a place called Hippocrates Health Institute. And at the time, I never heard of the raw food diet until I went there. And at Hippocrates, a Brian Clement, who I met, taught me all about the raw food diet and everything I needed to know. They put me on an 80% raw food diet. The Hippocrates Health Institute put me on an 80% raw food diet and 20% cooked vegan food. It was very successful. I wasn't totally cured, but I was doing much better. I decided I was strong enough to move back to New York City and when I did do that, after being on a Hippocrates diet for about five years, I met some felt people in New York who were doing the natural hygiene diet. And once I started doing that, I went on a 100% raw food diet, geared towards natural hygiene. It was much easier, and right away, my disease was 100% cured. And to this day, I haven't had any problems at all with ulcerative colitis. This process of me learning about the raw food diet and healing myself of all disease and discomfort did not happen overnight. It's a long road that I've been on and I'm still on that road. I'm learning new things every day and I'm always open to do things. I did it in stages and I highly recommend people if they have time on their side, they do a raw food diet in stages. If you don't have to do it overnight and if you're able to walk and talk, you do have time on your side no matter what a medical doctor thinks. And in my book, the raw food diet becoming natural in an unnatural world, that's what I recommend. I make it fun for people and I teach people how to do it in stages. How to give up first uh, dairy and then meat and then fish and slowly but surely each day keep going a little bit positive. That's what I did and that's what I'm still doing. I know some people who've tried it overnight and it was very successful. I also know some people who tried it overnight and they couldn't do it and it pushed them away from the diet even more and they wouldn't even consider trying to do it any again. So I recommend if you have time on your side just like I did, no matter what a doctor says because most doctor, medical doctors will tell you you don't have time on your side. And I recommend doing it in stages and my book talks a lot about how to make the transition and the road much easier for you in stages. And why make it hard on our bodies and ourselves if we don't have to? That's my message and that's what I try to give out in all my talks and that's what I've learned and I'm still learning every single day. I feel 100% raw food diet is the best diet for everybody and the easiest to do. Not because somebody can preach I do 100% raw foods because it is easier because if you eat anything less than 100% raw, if you eat 99.9% .9%, your body's always going to have the taste and the cravings for cooked food. Once a person goes on a 100% raw food diet after a couple of months, you lose the taste for cooked food and that's why it's easier actually to do it. You don't have to preach about it, just do it and if some, gradually and the amount of time it takes for everybody to get to that point is different for everybody. No two people are in the same place at the same time. So I recommend keep making the transition in stages from a standard American diet to a raw food diet. And don't worry about the time it's going to take you to get there. As long as you're going a little forward every day, that's the important thing. And eventually know where you want to go and why you want to get there. And that's how you're going to be most successful. And some people I do know they deviate, they go back and forth. They'll do a raw food diet for six months and then go back. People tell me, if I eat a, ask me, if I eat a little cooked food, uh, will it hurt me physically? Physically, it won't bother me at all. My body is very strong, and most of our bodies are. We can handle a cooked food diet or a cooked food meal. But mentally, it's going to open up all the emotions for a cooked food. And that's why I can't handle it, and most people can't. That's why I recommend nothing but 100% uh, as the ultimate goal. And like I said, no two people... No two people are in the same place at the same time, so it takes a different amount of time for everybody to get there. But as long as we have that as a final goal, that's what's important. To do a raw food diet successfully, there's many things involved that you need, but the two most important, I feel, is getting control of your emotions and being in the right environment. And those are the two most important things, I feel. And learning to, how to do that is having good support, finding raw food support groups, and believe it or not, there are people out there doing a raw food diet and as I got into this and people get into this, they find those people without even looking. And that's what I did and I recommend going to as much 
vegetarian meetings as possible, as possible and reading books and getting the knowledge from books, that's what's going to keep you going, stay in a positive environment. My whole life I was always interested in exercising and looking as best I can. And just like most people, they want to be big, everybody's into being big and muscular today. And I was the same way. I did all the sports drinks, I did all the sports powders when I ate cooked food. And I feel that contributed to my ulcerative colitis. And when I became raw, yes, at the beginning of my detoxification, I lost a lot of weight. Uh, I've learned that that's a part of, the, that's what you want to happen. If you're doing a raw food diet and you're not losing weight at the beginning, or you're not detoxing, you're doing something incorrect. Because uh, once your body detoxes and you understand what's happening, that's when the weight truly starts to come back on. And you have to understand, you won't be as heavy or where you were before you started a raw food diet, and many people think that's a problem, but question the fact that maybe we were overweight before we started the diet, because we are in a society, being overweight looks normal, but it's actually not. Being the proper weight looks like underweight to most people, and I still meet people today who, who knew me back then and say I'm underweight, but all the raw fooders I meet and all the people into health tell me I look excellent. I do a lot of presentations and lectures and workshops and I want to look as best possible. I feel it's very important. I feel one of the problems with people that give talks these days, they don't back it up with the way they look. And I feel it's very important to me so I try to get to the gym as much as possible. And I do cardiovascular exercise, I do weight training and calisthenics as much as possible. I would like to do it every day. I, as whenever I get a free trans chance, I'm doing something. I do know many people in the raw food movement who believe in being outside and working out as much as possible and outside or just getting movement and exercise, swimming, jogging. That's great if you can do that, but however you can get it, if it's in a gym working out with weights, if it's outside, just get some of it in your life. It's very important to have exercise in your life. And I'm my body has learned to thrive on a raw food diet and lifting weights are much stronger pound for pound and I look much better pound for pound. It's very interesting, somebody I met who's been on a raw food diet a long time told me, when you're into raw foods you won't look as good in clothes as you did on cooked foods because on cooked foods your body fills out the clothes because you have a lot of pus and water inside your body. And when you're on a raw food diet, you might not fill out the clothes, so you might not look good, but if you take any raw food who exercises, they'll look much better in a bathing suit on a raw food diet than when they were on a cooked food diet. And I know that I, I fall into that category, and that's what I like, seeing myself without any clothes on and appreciating the way I look. A problem a lot of people have when they first get into a raw food diet and making a transition, when they're detoxifying and losing the weight, they don't do any exercise and they have no muscle tone and that's why they look so skinny and drained out. But if they do some exercise and keep the muscle tone up, when they lose the weight they'll look excellent. What people want to accomplish when on a raw food diet is they want to put on the weight. And the best way to do that is to put on muscle weight. Not to overeat on fatty foods just to put on weight like that. It's to, don't worry about what you're eating. Work out in the gym and the muscles will come. And when you're working out, there's, there's two things to remember. The more reps you do, the more toned you're going to be, but you're not going to put on the size. The less reps you do with the heavier weight, that's what's going to put on the size. And that's just a fact. And too many people worry about eating too many fattening foods to put on the weight or to get in too many calories. I promise everybody, don't look at that, don't think about that. And just go to the gym and work out really hard, low reps, heavy weights, and you'll put on the size and the physique you, you want to get. And anything is obtainable when there's a will, there's a way. Pound for pound, you'll also be much stronger on a raw food diet than any cooked food diet you were ever on. If you see a, a guy in the gym working out who's able to lift a lot of weight, yeah, but he's probably very heavy. And when he takes his shirt off, he's probably not in any kind of condition that you'd actually want to be in. So it's better to be able to lift less weight than that person. Pound for pound, you might lose weight, but you're going to be more cut and have more muscles and they're going to show more, and that's where you want to achieve. The two biggest problems I find when eating a raw food diet are overeating and undersleeping. And that's just two problems in general that we have in nature. People are overeating and undersleeping. And the two best benefits to the raw food diet, I feel, are loss of weight and gain of energy. When you're taking things in your body, when you're overeating or taking too much food or too much of the wrong foods inside your body, your body is going to have to work a lot harder to compensate for that, thus using a lot more energy. When you're eating the natural diet, the raw food diet, your body needs 
uh, is using less energy, so it's all that much more energy you have. You'll sleep less and you want to do more and you'll enjoy it. Now, when you're at the beginning of a rough food diet during the detoxification, you might not have as much energy, but once you understand what's happening to the body, that's fine. Uh, ultimately, you're going to have much more energy, you're going to need less sleep, and you're going to want to go out there and exercise and be out in nature as much as possible. We have to remember laziness is a form of discomfort or disease. It's not natural for the body to be lazy. And if we are lazy, we have to look at our diet, even if it's raw, and look at, question how much we're eating and what we're eating that's wrong, because we should not be lazy. If we give the body the rest it requires, and we don't overeat, and give the body enough food, but not too much, you will not be lazy, and you're going to want to get out in nature and exercise every day. You should never have to fight it. I'm very good friends with uh, Dr. Douglas Graham, and I've learned a lot from him. Uh, him and Tim Trader, who learned from Doug Graham, by far have excellent physiques on a raw food diet. I know many people on a raw food diet who they don't walk their talk because they might be doing the diet part of it, but like the name of my book says, The Raw Life, it's not just about diet, it's about all aspects of the raw life. And exercise is a bit, very important part of it. And Dr. Doug Graham, by far, has more knowledge about the exercise in the human body and has the best physique out of anybody I've seen on a raw food diet. He's taught me a lot when it comes to working out and training and the role of food and nutrition has to do with exercise. And I highly recommend everybody be open to his ideas because they've helped me a lot to thrive at a raw food diet and also at exercising on a raw food diet. And without a doubt, anybody that does try his program will see tremendous benefits. What I do is I eat a lot less than most raw fooders even think of eating. And people new to the raw food diet, they get scared when they hear what I do. But I've learned, and like, I'm at the beginning of a raw food diet, it's not easy to live on little amounts of food. It takes time to get there. Once we obtain a 100% raw food diet, I don't recommend people stopping there because we're going to stay on the raw food recipes and keep overeating. There's always a higher goal to go, always a higher place. Uh, Dr. Fred Bishy told me something very interesting once. He's a fellow who's on a raw food diet for over 30 years. And he said, our bodies never stay at the same place. They're always moving. They're either going forward or backwards. And we have to remember that. Once we obtain a 100% raw food diet, we have to keep striving for higher goals. And that's what I try to do. And what that is, is try to not overeat and learn about the body and how it works. My typical day, I wake up in the morning and right away I do calisthenics. I do push-ups, I do pull-ups, I jump rope. I used to be a boxer, that's why my book is written geared towards boxing and the raw food diet. And I just try to get as much exercise for an hour in as possible. And while I'm doing that, I drink as much water as possible. I usually, before 11 o'clock every morning, drink one to two gallons of water. And it helps me not to overeat throughout the day. And then when my first meal usually comes, it's usually around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I, now this is what I do on average. There are days when my emotions take over and I definitely overeat and eat more than I, I know I should be eating. And there are days when I'll fast and eat less. But on the average, this is what I do. I'll eat my first meal around 3 o'clock and it's usually a durian or some other kind of exotic fruit. And if I can't get my hands on an exotic fruit, I'll eat some bananas or oranges. And I try to eat mono as much as possible. And if I do eat a second meal, which isn't often, I have a, a big salad, a big green salad. As, as far as uh, mono diets, whenever I eat fruits, they're mono. And whenever I get into eating uh, anything mixed, it's usually a salad. I am a raw food uh, chef, and I do make a lot of raw food recipes. But only when I'm making these recipes is when I actually eat them. I don't deviate. And even though there's raw food restaurants near my house, I don't go out and eat these recipes often because I've been in this diet long enough to know that that's not the best thing and I, I want to reach higher goals. When I first got into the diet, yes, I ate these raw food recipes throughout the day and that's fine for anybody new to a raw food diet. But once you're on a raw food diet for two, three, four years, if you're still doing that, you're not going to succeed. You've got to keep taking it higher and higher. So I eat very little and I usually go to the gym sometimes in the morning, sometimes at night time. And when I'm at the gym, I try to get in and get out and just do what I have to do. And that's follow my workout program. I work on different body parts every day. And I try to get there every day. And I stay in there a short amount of time. I lift heavy weights for each body part. I get in and I get out. Anything I can do outside of a gym, I do.
I leave what's for the gym, I leave working out with the heavy weights, and then I get out. I don't like to be inside working out in the gym. I wish I could be in nature working out, and I try to do it as much as possible. Well, when I'm in the gym, I hit the weights real heavy, real hard, real fast, and I'm out. I live in New York City, and I find that New York City is the easiest city in the world to do a raw food diet. And most big cities are very easy to accomplish a raw food diet, and most people don't think so, especially in a northern climate. A lot of excuse I hear often is, well, we're in a cold climate, how we can't do a raw food diet in the wintertime, and I disagree. I don't see cooked food as, or even raw food as saying, well, I need cooked food in the summertime, so why should they need cooked food in the wintertime? It's just not the case. And we're also, we're not living without clothes or steam or heat. We have a lot of that, and we're actually warmer in the wintertime than we are in the summertime, because in the summertime, everywhere you go, there's air conditioning. So it, it's very easy, once you get a mindset, to accomplish this in a big city. Also, in a big city, we have everything else, is, everything is available to us, from food to people doing this. If we live on some farm in, in Hawaii where there's nobody around, and we don't have the, qu uh, the different quantity of the different foods, it'll be much tougher, I feel, than to do it when you have all these different types of foods. The problems I see in a big city on a raw food diet are not the quantity of the food or the common problems that people see. The problem I see is the quality of the food. That's what gets a little less. And we have to do the best we can do wherever we are, but I definitely find that it's easier in a bigger city to do this diet than in a than in a small city where there aren't a lot of people doing it. Because support is very important and also having access to, to, to raw foods are very important. And it's just common sense that if you're in a big city that has two or three raw food restaurants and a fruit stand that's open 24 hours a day, it's much easier to get everything and to do this diet than if you're in a, a small town that has even the best fruit but they're only open five hours a day and then you have nothing else especially when you're first getting into this. After you're in this diet, the raw food diet, for maybe 10 years, maybe that'll be a better place to be. But for when you're on this diet for the first couple of years, it's very important to have that support and the people around you. So a big city is very important. And people have to get it out of the mindset that there's too many people or it's too cold or it's too crowded. You have to think positive always and make a positive thing out of any negative situation. I feel the two biggest problems with a raw food diet and the two things that will help us accomplish a raw food diet best, like I said, the problem is un undersleeping. The two biggest problems on a raw food diet, without a doubt in my mind, are undersleeping and overeating. And once we can get control over those two things, accomplishing a 100% raw food diet will become much easier. No, it's not easy, but it's much easier. We want to make our lives as easy as possible. Why do make something hard on ourselves if we don't have to? How do we accomplish that? I feel getting control, in touch with our emotions and putting ourselves in a positive environment are the two things we have to concentrate on. Food has very little to do with it. If we can do that, then everything else will be much easier and smoother for, for, you to accomplish, for anybody to accomplish a 100% raw food diet. Organic foods, many people ask me at my lectures, how important are they? And I feel they're very important if you have access to them. I, don't, I think it's more important not to stress yourself out if you can't get organic foods. I see people, they stress themselves out and they go long distances to get the best quality organic foods. Yes, there's no doubt in my mind that having foods that are fresh, organic, whole, and ripe are without a doubt the most important and best way to eat our foods. But if we're stressing ourselves out to get those foods, that's a bigger problem, I feel. And we have to look at that. There are certain foods that can be eaten that aren't organic, that are not as bad as other foods. For example, leafy greens, I know for a fact are sprayed very much, so I would say to somebody, try not to eat leafy greens that, are, that aren't organic, if you can. But something like avocados, I know they're not sprayed as much as, as other fruits. And coconuts, even though they're not labeled organic, they're, they're organic. They just don't label them, and there's no bug spray on, on coconuts. So we have to learn and get the knowledge about what's out there and learn the differences because between which foods are sprayed the most and sprayed the least. We can't stress ourselves out if we can't get organic food. You have to do the best with what you have and strive from there. It's very important to have the knowledge about organic foods and the raw food diet and everything you're doing, not just to have the knowledge but to exercise the knowledge, to use it. It's very important because if you have the knowledge and you don't use it, it goes to waste. So get as much information you, you can about raw foods and about organic foods and just being healthy and use that knowledge to the best of your advantage.
Many people, when I hear them give lectures and many books I read on the raw food diet and just health in general, they make a, an exciting subject quite boring and they don't keep it interesting and fun. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm an interested and fun person. And when I decided that I want to get this message out to as many people as possible, I decided I wanted to keep it entertaining. And I thought to myself, well, what's the most entertaining way to do that? And I question the role of sports. Sports are very entertaining. And I, so I knew I wanted to do something with sports and I questioned myself, what do sports have in common with the raw food diet? Or which sport has the most in common with the raw food diet? And believe it or not, I came up with the sport of boxing. Uh, it's, a, it's a very popular sport and the rules are very easy. Most people know about it. And some people say to me, how can such a, a violent sport ha have something in connection with something so calm like the raw food diet? And what I've come to realize is, just like a boxer, you're fighting alone, and you have people training you and helping you get there. Your support crew, support crew and the people you surround yourself with in your environment are those people who are training you, but it's up to you. And the harder effort you put in, the bigger the rewards are gonna come out of it. If you don't put a big effort in, just like a boxer gets knocked out, you're gonna get shy away from the raw food diet. So in my book, I looked at it with that scenario and I made different stages. And for example, I, take, say, I suggest take a list of your top 10 addictions and it'll be different for everybody. And picture those addictions are fighters. Just like in, in school, you wouldn't go from kindergarten to college missing all the grades in between because you would miss a, a much valuable information. It's the same thing with a raw food diet. Don't go from one stage to another without doing it in stages because you'll miss a lot of important information. And that's just like a box, boxer. He wouldn't go from fighting uh, a newcomer to fighting a champion overnight. So I recommend making a list of top ten, your top 10 habits and go through that in stages. And I, I named characters for them. And we have pictures in my book to make it fun. Here is Meat Man. And it keeps it exciting. You have to beat Meat Man. Before you even think about giving up cooked food, you want to give up all these other things. We have Dairy Man. There is another thing you want to give up. The list is going to be different for everybody. The list of addictions we're trying to give up. Without a doubt, cooked food is going to be at the top of addiction on everybody's list. Because the longer we're doing living with an addiction, the harder it is to break. And we're all we're fed cooked foods before we can walk or talk. That's how long we're eating cooked foods, and that's how hard it is to break. People think smoking is hard to give up. I have smoking man in my book for people who, and it gives tips on how to give up smoking. But if you put any smoker in a situation of they have to give up either smoking or cooked foods, all of a sudden smoking won't seem that complicated to give up. And they'll choose smoking because cooked foods is actually the most addicting and hardest thing to give up. That's why I recommend doing it in stages to get there. Just like a boxer, uh, a boxer has his support crew and his trainers, we need our trainers. We need exercise man, we need knowledge man, we need resting man. Things to help us accomplish our goals and to beat these opponents and to beat these addictions. So it's very important. My book will help a lot of people new to a raw food lifestyle in that way. My book, The Raw Life, will also help people who have been in a raw food lifestyle for a long time because I have interviews with many great raw term, raw, raw, people who've been into the raw food diet for a long time. Dr. Doug Graham, Dr. Fred Bishy, Morris Crook, they give many excellent tips. Many people on a raw food diet that I've interviewed in my book, long-term raw fooders, they'll give me completely different answers to the same exact question. And I realize there's no right or wrong answer to most of the question. It depends where the person is at and what time of life they're at. No two people are in the same place at the same time. So they're going to get different answers. One person might say spring water. One person might say distilled water. Nobody's right or wrong. It depends where we're at and what we have to work with. And that's what I find people getting too confused and getting, making this road complicated because they're getting different answers. Some people say a lot of fruit. Some people say a little fruit. And I say it depends where you're at and what time of life you're at. Take the information that makes sense to you and try it. If it works, go with it. If it doesn't work, find out what didn't work and adjust it. And that's what I recommend and that's what these people in my book did. They, the people in my book, the long-term raw fooders who I interviewed, have done completely opposite things. And they've been successful. Some people eat grains, some people are dead against grains. It doesn't to say one's right or wrong. It's to say there are different times at different places. And it'll help you to be open to everything. That's the most important thing. And to go with that and just keep striving 
to reach a higher, go higher goals and never settling for what common people say is, is the answer. Also, it's very important not to listen to somebody because the name doctor is in front of their name because uh, we play big on words, people play big on words, and people would rather listen to a doctor because they're wearing a white coat and have a degree. But medical doctors don't know much about the human body. It's like taking your car to a dentist to get it fixed. Going to a doctor is the same way because they're trained in drug therapy and they're not trained in health or the human body at all. So it's very important to not play on words and not listen to somebody because they are a medical doctor and just be open to everybody and everything you hear. I tell people if you want to be really healthy, whatever you hear on the news, do the opposite and you'll be the healthiest person in the world. Because it's so common for people to hear something on the news, to do it, then the next day to hear something completely opposite on the same news channel, to do that and just get confused. And their health goes down the drain. So it's very important to be open to everything you hear, even if it's the complete opposite. There's a reason that people are saying what they're saying. Of course, if something doesn't make complete sense to you or is totally absurd, don't try it. There's no, no reason to try that. But if you're open to everything, most things will make sense. Also, strive to be like somebody that looks good to you and is in the best of health. I don't want to be like a medical doctor who's 55, overweight, and smoking cigarettes. I want to look like Dr. Doug Graham or Dr. Tim Schrader, who look amazing. They're on a raw food diet, or Dr. Fred Bishy, who's on a raw food diet for many years. And when I say doctor, they're not medical doctors. They're doctors of raw food. They're doctors of natural hygiene. These people are who I want to be like. And that's who I'm striving to be like, people that are in a place where I know I, I foresee myself in the future. And that's what I recommend as well. And now I'll talk about the exotic fruits, OK? Many people tell me or ask me who are on the average uh, standard American diet, which stands for SAD, standard American diet, and it is very sad. Many people say to me, well, I can't do a raw food diet because there's not enough variety. And that's totally absurd once you get the knowledge because the fact is, if you eat one fruit every day for the rest of your life, no matter how young or old you are, you're not going to come close to tasting all the different varieties of fruits in the world because there are so many. And my life has opened up to all these different fruits and vegetables of the world. And I talk about a lot of them in my book. There's a fruit called a durian. I have been named the durian king because I like this fruit so much. I traveled all the way to Southeast Asia to eat this fruit fresh and to learn as much as possible about it. There is a special way to open this fruit and most people don't even know it's a fruit. It looks like a big oversized growing pineapple. I know a lot of cooked fooders who don't like these fruits. When I ate cooked food, I didn't like mangoes or grapefruits. I absolutely hated them. Now that I'm on a raw food diet, I love them. Don't settle for the apples and bananas that are in your neighborhood just because they're in your neighborhood. Because if you do that, you're going to think that there's not enough foods out there and you're going to think the diet is boring. There are so many other exotic fruits all over the world, especially if you live in a big city, they're accessible to you. We have mames, we have, we have monster fruits, we have durians, we have jackfruits. Fruits I never heard of and most people never heard of, but they're right there and, and they're amazing. They taste like you can't even believe. And once you get into all these different fruits, you learn that the diet is fun and it makes everything much easier and simple. So I recommend everybody learning as much as possible about exotic fruits and fruits that aren't the necessary apple or oranges. By no means am I saying don't eat apples or oranges, but I'm saying there's no need to just settle for them alone if you have all these other great fruits of the world right in your own backyard, which we do. There's a fruit, an exotic fruit called a durian, and this fruit is available in most Asian markets around in the United States. And it's known as a king of fruits. It, they say it smells like hell and tastes like heaven. And I actually love the smell, but I know most people who don't. Actually, in Singapore, where the fruit is grown, it's banned on the subway and hotels. It's, the smell is so strong. I brought this fruit to a baseball game in New York City. And the smell was so strong, and most people don't like it, that they were complaining. Yet they eat hot dogs and hamburgers right next to me, which the smell isn't great to me. Many of these fruits look weird and smell weird to people who don't know what it is. I love them, I know what they are, and I purchase them in, in Asian markets and Latin markets, and I'll shop, I'll find them. I, I get so happy when I see a fruit I've never seen before because it just opens up my world to something new. I tell a lot of people, if you taste 10 new things, and I'm talking about raw food recipes to exotic fruits, and you hate nine of them, but you love one of them, 
That's just one new thing that you can add to your diet that you didn't like before. So it's very important to be open to tasting new things. Me personally, I go to Chinatowns, well, any city I am throughout the world, I go to Latin markets and I find the fruits and I know most of them and the ones I don't I experiment with and it opens up my, my taste buds to everything else that's new out there. For example, a coconut that's found in most stores in the United States are hairy and they're hard with hard coconut meat in the middle. Most people I speak to don't understand that a coconut's actually green and it's called a young coconut or a baby coconut and it grows on palm trees in, in the Caribbean or on tropical islands and the meat you can eat with a spoon is so soft and the water is one of the most beneficial great tasting things you can put inside your body and when I tell people on the average standard American diet that a coconut is green they try to actually argue with me most people don't understand that there's no such thing as cholesterol when it comes to eating fruits and vegetables cholesterol is only found in animal products I've had arguments with doctors over this. They still won't believe me. It just proves that doctors don't know about health and they don't teach about nutrition in medical school. Durians, coconuts, apples, bananas, all these fruits of the world are the things our bodies need to thrive. And everything that's found in fruits is all they need to survive. And eating anything else, if you put anything in the body that doesn't belong there, is what's going to cause dis-ease and discomfort in the body. And that's what most people are doing. Cooked food doesn't belong in the body. Negative thoughts do not belong in the body. And when we put these things in the body, that's what causes all this discomfort and disease. Now disease is another word that doctors and most people took, take too heavily and seriously. If anybody changes the word disease with discomfort, it's actually the same exact thing. But when you change it, it doesn't seem like such a, such a scary word. That's all it is, and if you don't put things in a body that don't belong there, you will not have any discomfort. And exotic fruits and vegetables in their raw state that are ripe are things that do belong in the body and will keep us thriving if we don't overconsume them. And if we eat them in the right amounts, that's all we need to survive in nature. And if we put anything more in our body, that's where discomfort and disease is going to start and continue until we get those things out of our body and out of our life. Most people on a standard American diet are not going to agree with what you're doing when you're trying to make the change to a raw food diet. I highly recommend finding people who are there. There are a lot of people out there. I'm out there. Finding people, find people who have been through it, who have gone through it. Just like when you make the change to a vegetarian diet. People won't support you because they think we need to eat animal meat and animal products. And we might not sound normal to these people, but just because normal is eating these things doesn't mean it's right. And if that's what being normal is, I don't want to be normal. And when it comes to meeting people like my family and other people who think what I'm doing is wrong and incorrect and don't understand the human body, we have to learn how to deal with them. Now how do we deal with them? I highly recommend not even mentioning you're on a raw food diet or, or anything to do with raw foods in front of people that you know you're not going to get support from. If you go to a, a Thanksgiving dinner at your, at your friend's house and they're eating a, this big dinner with all this turkey and stuff and you know if you mention raw food diet they're going to criticize you and they're going to be negative about it just tell them you have a stomach ache and you don't want to eat, eat tonight and I'm just going to have orange juice or something they'll understand that a lot more better a funny story I was in Hawaii last year and I went to sit down at the table and they gave bagels with cream cheese out to everybody for breakfast and I asked the lady I said can I have a raw food plate please because I don't eat I, I, I just said, can I have a raw food plate? She gave it to me. Everybody at the table saw my raw food plate of just the freshest fruit from Hawaii, and they all decided, well, I don't want the bagel either. I want to eat a fruit plate today, not knowing I was on a raw food diet, and it was a beautiful thing. Now, if I would have went there saying, oh, I'm a raw food eater, I don't eat raw food, I don't, I don't eat cooked food, I won't eat bagels because bagels are poison, not only would I have turned off those people, they probably would have ate an extra bagel and they would have gave me a lot of negative information. Only talk about it in, in an environment that you know people are going to be positive. There's no re necessary reason to mention it when you're with standard American people doing a standard American diet. A funny story is how people think my brother, he, was, he came to visit me when I was living down in Florida and he, we were driving in a car, he ordered a roast beef hero. And a little bug was on the roast beef hero, so we said, I can't eat this. He couldn't eat it because he found a little bug in it. 
And I, said, I looked at him like it was crazy. I said, well, look what you're actually eating, and you're worried about a little bug. He's eating a roast beef hero, and he's worrying about a little bug. It's just the way people think. It's the same way about health. My father, if he feels great, but he goes to a doctor because the doctor told him he wasn't healthy or something was wrong, he'll say something is wrong. Or vice versa, he can feel terrible. He'll go to a doctor, and the doctor will say, well, I ran tests, and everything's fine. Nothing's wrong. And he'll say, he'll call me up and say, nothing's wrong with me because the doctor said I was OK. I said, listen to your body. Something's wrong with you because you don't feel good. You should not have discomfort. And if you do something's wrong, no matter what a test says or a doctor says. So dealing with people, the average person on the street, is not easy. So I recommend you don't have to deal with them, then don't. But if you have to, learn how to take their negative powers and, and use them positively if you can. And if not, there's many answers and many ways to, to, to do it. And my book recommends a lot. Just find that and go with that and be happy and enjoy what you're doing is the most important message. Because if you don't enjoy what you're doing, if you're ever depressed about it, that's what another setback you're going to hit and it's going to be hard to, to achieve your, whatever it is you're trying to achieve.